Okay, let's go through some of the concepts that you need to understand to fully understand this series or lecture on uh, the bankruptcy process. To start with, filing for bankruptcy. Well, generally, uh, a bankruptcy arises in one of two fashions, either voluntarily or involuntarily. And this focuses on the debtor. Did the debtor voluntarily file or petition the bankruptcy court to be a part of the bankruptcy process? That is, to go through bankruptcy for uh, to liquidate assets and pay debts or to reorganize their affairs? Uh, or did creditors of the debtor involuntarily, that is, did they subject the debtor to the bankruptcy process by petitioning the court to subject the, uh, the debtor. Now, uh, this is uh, uh, something we'll discuss in greater detail in subsequent videos, but just understand that um, it's not always the voluntary process of the debtor to file for bankruptcy. Sometimes the debtor is involuntarily subjected to bankruptcy. Okay? And next concept is the bankruptcy estate. Now, the bankruptcy estate is a form of trust scenario. In order for bankruptcy to function effectively, it needs to remove the assets uh, from the debtor and then collect the debt, uh, the claimed uh, debts by the creditors. Okay, so in order to do that, ownership or control of the debtor's assets are transferred into this uh, bankruptcy estate, this trust scenario, which is either uh, controlled by a trustee or by the debtor in possession of their own assets. And uh, this is central to the, again, the either reorganization of the affairs of the debtor or the collection of the assets, liquidation, and payment of existing debts. So uh, that's the bankruptcy estate. Next, a core or fundamental concept of bankruptcy is the automatic stay. All right. What this means is the automatic stay of proceedings or collection efforts uh, means that uh, normally when a debtor uh, goes into the bankruptcy process, they are the subject of collection actions by their creditors. That is, creditors are seeking uh, judgment liens, etc., to collect their uh, debts. All right, or collect the debts owed to them by the debtor. Now, once the debtor files or enters into the bankruptcy process. There, uh, section 362 of the Bankruptcy Code says that all collection efforts have to stop. All right? Creditors can no longer seek to collect debts against uh, the debtor unless those debts are specifically excluded from the bankruptcy estate. So, with that being said, all collection efforts have to stop in that way, and that is a core uh, principle necessary for the effective uh, administration of the estate, uh, either the liquidation of assets and payment of claims or the reorganization of assets. So again, this automatic stay principle is fundamental, but we'll talk about a little bit more about the automatic stay in subsequent videos. Okay, uh, The meeting of creditors. This is a procedural step in the process where all the creditors of the debtors can get together and review the, uh, the documents or the information about the debtor uh, in the current bankruptcy filing. As well, they can elect the trustee to represent them in the situation when it's uh, not a business reorganization, right? Because generally in that situation, you have a debtor in possession that uh, maintains uh, the uh, assets and affairs of the state. You don't have a trustee, but at that meeting of creditors. Uh, but creditors then can also uh, seek to get a trustee appointed in a business reorganization, but we'll talk about that a, a bit more later as well. But just understand that the cre creditors uh, have this opportunity and this is the process by how their rights are represented uh, through the election of the uh, bank bankruptcy trustee. Okay, uh, next, creditor priority. Now, if you don't understand the concept of priority, uh, I recommend you go back to our video series on uh, secure transactions where we discuss in detail uh, the concept of priority and who gets, when it comes to debtors, who gets paid first. All right, so that's, that, that's, that's the general uh, concept. When, you, when the debtor owes creditors, uh, who does that debtor pay first? Or in the situation of bankruptcy, when you have a bankruptcy estate that where uh, money coming into the state, uh, estate or uh, the liquidated assets creates value in the estate, uh, in what order are uh, cred creditor claims against the estate paid? Okay, who gets paid first? And when you have classes of creditors, secured creditors, unsecured creditors with different priority, uh, an entire class of creditor generally has to be paid off before 
uh, the next class of creditor gets paid it all. So sometimes people will um, get paid something or everything and other creditors will get paid nothing. But again, we'll discuss that uh, more in, in further videos. Um, and then uh, the concept of discharge. At the end of the bankruptcy uh, re plan of reorganization, at the end of, at, it, at the uh, commencement of it, they lay out a time period by which uh, the debtor will reorganize this affairs over a specific stated period of time. At the end of that reorganization plan or at the um, conclusion of the liquidation of all the debtor's uh, assets and payment to uh, creditors, uh, the bankruptcy court will discharge the debtor from liability for all of those debts included in the bankruptcy estate or proceeding. Okay, so discharge is the relief uh, of the debtor from liability for those debts that are included in the bankruptcy estate or process.